Okay, here's a demonstration of replacing some burnt terminals with burnt cables. Uh, we'll be replacing a couple terminals, we'll be replacing a cable. We're also going to be exchanging some standard terminals with grounding blocks. Uh, so what you need to access these terminals and do this work, you'll need a small precision screwdriver flat tip uh, number one. Um, we'll actually be using a couple today, a couple small flat tip screwdrivers so that we can take these apart in groups. So the first thing, the terminals that we're going to be replacing are these UPS 2N terminals. This is jumper together in a group, so we will be replacing the entire group, both sets of terminals here connected together. First thing that we're going to do, the PC power cord for PC4 is the one in question. It has a burnt neutral wire, likely from a loose connection here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to unwire this power cord. So you'll see that it's three wires, but it goes into one power cord with a standard IEC computer style connector on the end of it. So first thing we're going to want to do, this should be labeled PC4 power and then it'll be UPS2 G for ground, UPS2 N for neutral, and UPS2 L for line. So we're going to unwire the three PC4 power connections here. These are just screw terminal connectors so you just need your screwdriver into the hole, loosen it, wire comes out. Okay, once those three wires are loose, you'll have uh, several zip ties to clip and you can remove this all the way back to the computer and you can throw away this damaged cord. From there, next we're going to remove the wires going to the bottom of this UPS 2 N terminals here. And then we're also going to be replacing these four ground terminals here. So any other ground wires, all your ground wires are going to be green. All the rest of the wires going into any of these four ground terminals, you can remove, you can temporarily remove, and we'll replace these terminals with grounding blocks. So we're going to remove this one, we're going to remove this one. So we're going to replace all six of these terminals. So each of these is jumpered together so they're in pairs of two. So Rather than removing the jumpers, we can remove the pairs together. So if we take two small screwdrivers, we can go into the clips on the bottom of each of these terminals and we just pry slightly and you'll see the terminal pops up. I'm trying to do another angle so my hands don't get in the way. show you a little bit closer here. So on these terminals, so this side here connects on and hangs onto the rail and then this side here snaps down so you see I can put my when I go to remove I put my screwdriver and I pry just a little bit and it releases this clip that'll allow it to move. So we're gonna remove these here. I've supplied you with a new pair of neutral terminals already jumpered together, already all connected. So you just need to hook this top side here onto the rail and then snap the bottom side down. Something like this. So you get it hooked in place, slide it over tight and then it clicks into place and then you'll see it snapped in nice and tight. For the remainder of these terminals we're going to use grounding blocks. So these grounding blocks you'll again use your precision screwdriver, they have a screw right in the center of them that you use to tighten or loosen this. So this guy will also clip on to the rail, but you might need to loosen this screw to actually get it to go down on the rail. Once you're down on there like so, then you can tighten the screw down and it will clamp itself on. This should be clamped on very tight then. So we're going to install the remainder of these.
Again, when I clip these on here, if it doesn't go all the way down, I'm going to loosen this screw terminal first, and then that should allow it to go all the way down. Then I will tighten the screw up, and that will hold it in place. And when you put these in, what I'm doing also, I'm also pulling these over tight so that they're up tight close to each other. That helps hold them all together nice and firm as well if you squeeze them in tight. Okay, so now our new grounding blocks are in place and our new replacement neutral terminals are in place. So from here now, I can rewire my existing all of my existing ground wires so these ground wires because they clamp down tight to this bar they are electrically connected to this bar they're electrically connected to the ground plane so it does not matter now which hole you wire any of your ground wires so all of your green ground wires just need to go into any of these ground terminals because they're all electrically the same so, and again, just like the other terminals, you go into the small hole at the top or bottom for whatever side you're connecting. You can loosen it up a little bit, slide your wire in, hold it firmly, and then tighten it down. And once again, it does not matter what hole you go into as long as all of your ground wires are in firm. Uh, whenever you get a wire tight, it should be seated as deep as it can be in there, and then once tightened down, give it a little tug test, make sure it's snug in there. So, replace all the bottom and all of the top ground wires and ear ground wires. We're going to also replace the neutral wire, which is your white wire, that came into the bottom of your neutral terminals. And it does not matter if you go into this first or the second terminal, they're both electrically tied together, they're the same thing. So again, we might loosen this up a little bit, make sure our wire slides in firmly. You'll see sometimes it catches a little bit when it goes in, but it should go firmly in. The ferrule should go all the way in here. Tighten it down, and again, give it a little tug test. The key is to make sure that all your wires are fully seated as deep as they can go, and then they're cranked down good and tight. Once my neutral's back in place, all my grounds are in place, I can then bring my new power cable for PC4, and I'm going to wire that back in. The green wire is going to go into any of these ground terminals. So pick a ground, loosen up the screw, make sure your wire's fully seated in there. Tighten down, give it a tug test. The white wire is going to go into either one of these two UPS2 neutral terminals here. Again, loosen if needed. Make sure it's fully seated. And then tighten down snug. And then the black wire needs to go into one of the UPS2 L terminals. From there, then you can go ahead and route this cable back over to PC4, zip tie it back in place, make sure everything's nice and clean and routed. Go ahead and go through all of these terminals, any, any terminal that has a wire connected to it, and make sure that the screw is snug down tight, the wire is fully seated in the connector, and give it a tug test, make sure that it's tight. If any of them look like they're not fully seated, just go ahead and loosen up a little bit and get it pushed all the way back in and then tighten it back down. Again, you want to make sure that all your wires are tight, fully seated and tight into the screw terminals. Go into the center of all of these ground blocks, make sure that they are all, again, snug down onto the bar, make sure they're all clamped in place. 
and then you can go through the center of all of these groups here there's little screws that connect these jumpers together to tie the terminals so you want to go ahead and make sure that those are all tight and secure as well.